The detective only has a couple of days till retirement, but then the lady in distress shows up and begs him to help her out. He decides, against all reason, to do this one last thing, but the case proves to be his hardest yet. Somewhere down the line, the detective gets shot, fade to black. The case was spinning out of control, so fast I had to hold onto my hat. Nothing made sense, and it was getting more twisted by the minute. We've come across an old buddy of mine, who has suddenly found himself out of purpose and place. The steel mill, where Rust worked for years, got blown to bits. Hundreds of hard-working, honest people lost their jobs overnight. The police are writing it off as an accident. CBG? Haven't seen him in a while. You're saying he knows something. It's worth a shot, ain't it? Oh my god, Ted. That's him. That's the Red Man. He's in my house. I'm afraid without the mayor's signature, no one is allowed to enter or leave the city at the moment. Uh, and it's Brian, sir. I have a strong feeling in my gut. It's all somehow connected. My retirement, the fires, and the official cover-up. What happened to Flint, the Red Man? It's all leading to her. I feel she is the key to all of this. The last piece of the puzzle I have to solve. Does she know more than she's led me to believe? Or have I let my suspicions get the better of me? It's hard for me to admit this. It's also downright stupid. But I've let myself trust her over the years. We've worked together. And I have to trust her now. I don't know what the hell he is, but judging by the stories, he's the devil himself. I pray that he didn't have anything to do with Flint's disappearance. He won't stop until he finds her, and it seems Shark is desperate to arrange this meeting. But it seems to me, Red has his own agenda. Ted! It's him! He's here! Ted! Ted! It's me. They're on the way. You can't keep us here. I need to go and look for Flint. He could be in danger. <laughs> As if you have a choice. Take them away. I don't think so, King. So the girl will stay out of Paper City. I'll close the borders and the boys will stall her until... As soon as everything is set up, my men will take our friend to the exit. This thing we're doing, King, it, it's, it's not right. Mm, it's for the good of the city, Daniel. The Red Man and the girl are connected in more ways than one. They are on two sides of the same coin. Things she doesn't know, he knows. And things he's missing. She owns. Seeing as you got Tigran to remove the spell from me, I'm not really optimistic about my chances, Ted. But don't worry. It's time to teach that red-hooded freak what happens when you try to threaten the king. You just get her out of this place, Ted. Get her out of this damn city. I'll try. But what about the red man? You know what? Fine, leave. It's not like I really need you anymore. I'm capable of doing things on my own. I figured as much. Just wanted to hear you say it. Well, see you around, doll. Alright, hello everyone. This is Gamer, and welcome back to Bear With Me. It's been a while since I played with this, and... It's been a while since I played this game, and this episode came out, like, not recently, but, like, a while back. Not too while back, but, like, recently while back. But, um, yeah, let's check our settings, because this setting is already messed up. Oh, my God, what is that resolution? Heck no. A lot better. Uh, yes, perfect. Um, window mode, heck no. Oh, I don't, of course, new game. Huh. Paper City.
There's the alley. Was that say the wall to the left? I could read that. It was too fast. Oh, Tigress place. Loading. Hey, we're Amber. It looks like someone was looking for something. I hope Tigran's okay. We're Amber. Nice. If this room was a box inside a screen and someone would be looking inside it, the arrow would look like it's pointing southeast. I'm quirky like that. It's turned left, but there's nothing on it. Nothing on it. It doesn't say anything, but it's pointing right. Get my rain, Ted? Oh. Get my rain, Ted? Oh. That's not worth her. Think I rain, Ted? I think she meant think. Pointy things helped us out so f Uh, yeah. Have you seen that one scene of a uh, scream where, where uh, Cindy used the umbrella on the one dude? Heck yeah. Very useful. This one might look better on the floor. Can't reach it by hand. I need something longish. Eyeballs. My oh my. Yeah. The quotation marks are not there by accident. This side up. Hey, they flipped it right. <laughs> oh, wait, wait, wait. No, 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 no. Don't, don't mess with the door. Uh, oh, I got my Swiss Army knife still. Nice. Huh. Oh. Whoop. There's a schematic drawing on the back of the paint. Okay. I should got this door. It's locked. There seems to be a panel on it. Wonder what's behind it. Oh, yes. Maybe I should tell Lebowski it's here. <laughs> Maybe I... This cheese is not Gouda. <laughs> not really up to the task, are you? <laughs> Looks like it's pointing south. No intentions on touching that. Sorry if I'm not saying much, I'm just looking around and thinking, oh my god. Also, I hate my damn allergies. My allergies are the worst. They go down south? Okay. And the. Because that arrow says south. So I don't know, I don't know what I'm doing. Looks like something is behind. Let's mess with this. There seems to be a mechanism for the lock. Huh. There's a schematic drop. Um. What are those scratch marks? On the schematics means. Oops, sorry, I accidentally bumped into my mic a little bit. I mean, my thumb hit the mic part. Uh. Huh. I don't know. Let's mess with the door mechanism. Oh boy, it's one of these puzzles. 
Um, Tiger's Lair. Let's look at the schematics again. There's a schematic drawing on the back of the painting. Okay. Uh. Looks like this west, east, south. And then this looks like north a little bit. I don't know. But let me try something. Oh, wait. I bet that the drawing on the back of the painting has something to do with it. It sure does. Okay. I think this is it from what I saw on the thing I think so oh shift like an A Open sesame. Who needs you, bear? <gasps> I've left her there. I did. On that creaky old pier. It was more of a suggestion than a decision. I was walking slowly, just waiting for her to turn around, to yell at me to come back. Anything. She didn't. I've come to expect that from her. She's really headstrong. Difficult. Thomas, I can see traces of you in her eyes. The same look, that same twinkle when adventure calls. But most of the time, she just marches on to the beat of some other drummer. The one I can't hear so well anymore. I made a promise to you. Back then, when she was born, promises and old age don't go well together. She's constantly getting me in tough spots, and it's getting impossible for me to keep up. It was easier with you. We thought we could really make a difference. You and I, remember? We thought we could clean up this dump together. But then, you changed. You grew up. It happened so fast. With Amber, I feel she can do it all on her own. And I'm just here for the ride. I'm not blaming you. I never did. Even when Margaret knocked on the office doors and I saw that stupid look in your eyes, I knew. I knew our time was coming to an end. I watched you both grow up. And I remember you two becoming best friends. I was there for your wedding, man. I remember you coming home with your son a year later. You were so proud. And I was happy for you. A couple of years later, Amber came along, and I could smell trouble all over her. She was bad news from the start. When she grabbed and hugged me for the first time, my eye popped, but she was laughing. It was funny to her. I guess it was funny to me, too. Oh boy, I thought, this will never work. But it kind of did. I admire her in a way. Everything is new and exciting to her. And she embraces life with both hands until its eyes pop out. As King said, she really is something else. You made me promise I would always keep her safe. And God knows, I tried even though she wasn't making it easy for me. I can tell you that much. This thing that's happening to her now, I feel she has to do this on her own. Besides, she said it herself. She doesn't need me anymore. And I need her as I need a bullet to my head. What I do need is a drink. I think I earned one after all. Damn. So, where are we on that drink pack? As I already told you, I'm not running a goddamn charity here, Ted. Times is tough. Besides, my name is Jameson, as you know. But you just kept referring to me as Thomas this whole time. Who the hell is Thomas? Hey. Did I ask for your life story? Just get me a damn drink. You know I'm good for- I don't, actually. You have an extensive tab here, Ted. You have to start paying soon, man. I told you this already. 
You damn squid. Who did you call first when you thought your wife was having an affair? Well, you. But you charged me for it. Yeah, well, you know, times is tough. At least I give you a friends and family disc. No, actually. You overcharged me for your field expenses, which were basically just you drinking here for free and having me drive you home every night. What's your point? My point is... And how can I put this lightly? You have to start paying for your goddamn booze, Bear. How's the missus? Oh, you know, she's doing okay. Wherever she is. Women. Uh. <laughs> Tell me about it. Just give the man a drink, Jay. It's on me. Hey, Headless. When did you get here? I was literally here this whole time. You were actually telling me your story, but you kind of switched to Jay here mid-sentence. We thought it was weird, so we had a discussion about it while you were talking. You see, we both think this whole Amber thing is troubling you more than you're willing to admit. How'd you fix? You care for the girl, Ted, more than anyone else. You just basically told us your whole life story, even though we resisted actively. I mean, I tuned out so many times. I did my taxes in the meantime. Jay did his taxes. Anyways, all I'm saying is you're usually not the talkative type, and here you are just rambling on for the past hour or so. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't realize I was being a burden on you, too. Come on, don't be like this, Ted. You're really still relatively relevant, you know? Yeah, sure, buddy. You're all that. Whatever, you lowlifes. Some friends you are. Go after the girl, Ted. She needs your help more than ever now. We all do. This is the time for a man to show who he really is. All that effort, it means nothing if you leave her now, when she needs you the most. Never thought of you as a quitter, honestly. <laughs> I did. He often quits on paying his tab. All right, you've made your point, goddammit. I'll get you the money by the end of the month. <laughs> sure. Now don't you go getting shot on me in the meantime. I could never do that to you, buddy. Go find her, Ted. She's probably alone and scared, and no matter what falling out you two had, I'll bet you my bottom dollar she wishes her partner is with her on this. Yeah, I guess. What the hell am I doing anyways? Talking to a couple of village idiots instead of finishing the goddamn case. How could I leave her like that? I mean rude. Right. I have to go and find her. She needs my help. Headless, you got this, right? Right? Sure. Put this on his tab, too. Um, no time to talk. I have to go. <laughs> Headless is pretty cool. Uh, Paper City. Is that a dead whale in the water with that bag right here? You see that? All right, back to where we started. Oh, wow, Tiger's Lair. I hope these don't need automatic updates every couple of days, too. I mean, finish a damn product before launching it. I might have shot myself in the foot there. Huh. I hope these don't... Oh. Huh, a truly remarkable garage door. It's really like nothing I've ever seen so far in life. Always send the dumbest guys to solve convoluted puzzles. They always find the most creative solution. Huh. What happened here? I'll get them for this. These were criminally underused in the last episode. <laughs> I'll just take these again. <laughs> we didn't use the match. I didn't use the matches that much on episode two, did I? Not even matches on episode. You know what? That is true. It didn't move since I last saw it. That's true. It did not move. It, it, it stayed like that the whole episode. Anything else to check out? No. Let's go in. Oh, I wish you could say something about that lamp. Amber saw something that shocked her over here. I wonder what it was. Not really artisan woodwork, if you ask me. Not really artisan woodwork, if you ask me. Does whatever a spider web does. <laughs> I've wondered what the hell this thing is. Guess I'll never know. Looks unused. 
This cheese sure is not Gouda. Get yeah, I get it. It's not good enough. <laughs> Doodles aren't really my forte. Maybe Amber would enjoy this one. Huh. In the land of the blind, a man with a jar of eyes is the king. Ah. Nice reference. It's pointing at a specific direction, as arrows tend to do. Ah, uh, hang in there, but... <laughs> Classy. Yeah. I bet Amber would have a great comment for this thing. She sure did. She says, not quotation marks. Ah, uh, generic rug comment. I mean, it's just a rug. Looks unused. Let's take the candle. Maybe it'll come in handy. Oh, I didn't see this before. A glass slot. Yeah. Maybe I can view it somehow. I check my stuff. Uh, carrot juice. That wasn't the alcohol. <laughs> A carrot juice alcohol drink. Now that I'm thinking about it, huh? This cheese sure is not Gouda. Get it? Huh? Yeah. All right, back room. What happened back here? Oh. Amber must have saw something that freaked her out, though. Smells like teen, um, ghost. Ah, oh, I get what he's saying. What the reference he was about to say. <laughs> teen spirit. Huh. As if this place wasn't creepy enough without flickering imagery. I know, right? A two-headed snake. One is eating itself while the other isn't. Huh. I don't get it. Yeah, shouldn't it be, shouldn't it be the two snakes eating each other, not that way? Yeah. Zero reflex, a psychedelic experience. How to enslave a soul. I smell a Pulitzer nomination at the very least. <laughs> I can barely make out the outline on it. It's creepy voodoo stuff. The hotspot really describes it best. Ah, I'm not voodoo tired. Just regular tired. <laughs> Pazuzu. That's a, that's, a, that's a demon name, isn't it? That's one ugly deity. Oh, that's a god? I thought it was a demon. I ain't touching that. I had enough of creepy inventory for today. Another slide. Yeah. Let's go get that. Is this the final one? Good question. I ain't touching that. I had enough of creepy inventory for today. <laughs> Stylish. Except for the bone. Yeah. Very undertakerish. It's creepy voodoo stuff. The hot spot really describes it best. Voodoo deer. Who would want to spend time with a stuffed animal? Am I right? <laughs> I feel like there's something else I'm missing here. Smells like teen, um, ghost. <laughs> teen spirit. Oh, I, that's one ugly deity. I don't know if I want to talk to Pazuzu. Huh. As if this place wasn't creepy enough without flickering imagery. Let's just take it with us. If projectionist school taught me anything, this is where you put in the slides. Yep. All right, let's talk to Pazuzu. Hey there, buddy. Got any tips? Your mother washes socks in hell, 
All right, calm down. <laughs> Is there anything else I should check? Oh, what's this? I ain't touching that. I had enough of creepy inventory for today. It's creepy voodoo stuff. Th uh. Oh! Another slide. I didn't notice that before. Hmm. Is this the last one? Who knows? Oh, voodoo dolls. You guys okay? Hey, you all right up? Call me Voodoo Jones. All right. Got an achievement for that. Nice. Let me... Oh. That was weird. Let me save my game. There you go. All right, guys. I'm going to have to end my video here. If you like this video, please give this video a like. Comment on this video how you came so far. Subscribe channel to see more game videos like these. Alright, this has been Gamer. Peace out. I'll definitely see you on the next episode of Bear With Me Episode 3. Bye everyone.